What's up, YouTube? We've been talking a lot about aerating, about starter furt, about the seed that we're picking for this fall. So we should probably ask the question, when's the right time to put all this stuff down or do these things? We're gonna discuss it today. going on youtube it's mr ferguson here once again thank you guys for coming back for another video here in central north carolina as we mentioned we want to talk about when is the perfect time or when is the the, the best time to put down all these products that we've purchased our all of our stash for the fall repair season when do we need to put that down we're going to get to that here in just a second thank you so much for tuning in i did want to mention we got about an inch of rain the other night here's a clip i went out and was standing on the porch just enjoying all the heavenly water that begin to come down uh, funny quick story I was literally I ran out about an hour before that clip I took um, it got nasty for a while for about 30 to 45 minutes it, it was a severe storm for real uh, but I ran outside I said I can get a mow in I need to cut the grass the grass was already as I showed you guys last video five and a half inches long so I knew the rain was coming I dropped the mower to 3.5 inches um, I've already and I was like let me and I did a speed mow literally when I did my last pass over here on the side of my house, the rain began to fall. I was like, God, you're so amazing. And I got the mower in the shed without getting soaked and drenched and got inside and then the bottom fell out. So uh, it, God is amazing. So I got to brag on my God a little bit. Uh, he, he held it off for me to get the mow in. So I did mow it at three and a half inches. Um, and so uh, we got a lot of water, praise God. We needed it and uh, hopefully we'll get some more by the beginning of next week. So there's a couple things I want to share quickly in this video. I've already tried to record this once. I didn't like the way it sounded or came out. Out. So I'm going to try to combine two different topics uh, in this video with you guys. Number one, I am going to aerate this year. And so uh, I, what do you mean, Mr. Ferguson? You said you're not going to aerate. Well, there's multiple types of aeration. There's spike aeration. There's core aeration. I'm going with the liquid aeration variety. I've not done a lot of aerate. Next has a product, if you don't know, called aerate. It's liquid aeration. Um, it does it absolutely. Can I prove 100% that it absolutely works in our lawn? I cannot do that. Um, however, I believe Believe that just uh, applying that as a source of if it does work, if it truly does what it says, and I believe next we've seen some. We saw the Alan Hain video he did the other day testing the different humic, CK, all these different products, and we saw it made a difference compared to water alone. If you watch that video, if not, check out the last video. It's in that link description, or check out Alan Hain's Lawn Care Nut page. Um, I'm taking, I'm going to go that route just to see, you know, I'm not going to put mechanical aeration in my lawn this year. Last year, if you guys recall, many of you said the exact same thing. We had an issue with POA Trivi, Trivialis, POA Trivi, POA Trivialis popping up. I, I, I did a, a core aeration for like the third or fourth year in a row. I don't need to do it that many times, but it's just what's worked for me. Every time I overseed, I felt the necessity to do mechanical aeration. This year, I'm not doing it. Mr. Kevin's not doing it, but I am going to be aerating and I'm going to go the liquid route. I'm going to get me some aerate. I am going to apply that. So I'm going to, if anything, hopefully that will, those little microbes, uh, uh, microorganisms and the humic will help the grass, help it, help loosen it up a little bit at least. Um, and so uh, there are multiple types of aeration. Just quickly, I wanted to share with you, I did some research on core aeration versus spike aeration. If you recall, I talked about how my dad would bring over the cylinder with welded spikes on it that you put water in to add weight. And I was reading about that and while uh, this website I was reading said that can be effective doing it that way can cause compaction in the future um, doing core aeration allows the oxygen to really to to help the as Rob was telling me in the comments last video to help your lawn to breathe however the con to that is aeration of these mechanical type of either one does open up our ground for the seeds that are buried in our dirt to be able to pop up so be aware of that poetry uh, it's a tough one to fight. I was cutting it out all last fall. It was annoying, but my lawn looked amazing. So there are pros and cons, but I did want to mention I will be aerating, but I'm going to try the aerate variety this year. Go on the max rate, do it maybe once, maybe twice, but uh, that's the that's the most aeration I'm going to get in my lawn. Now up at the church, that's up for debate. Uh, that is our lawn project. We're going to be talking more in depth about that. We, we've got some things in the works that we're talking about. I don't want to share too much. I want to show you, but I have already applied the glyphosate, as you guys saw in the last lawn project video it is smoked off up there i'm trying to get the camera up there to show you hopefully on uh next week's video we can be up there and show you 
how it's looking up there, but we will likely, if we aerate up there, which I think we will, it will be a mechanical aeration because it's never been aerated. Very compacted up there. It probably needs aerate plus mechanical aeration. So just wanted to bring that to you real fast about aeration. And lastly, in this video, uh, more towards the newbies, more towards those that may be doing a, uh, a lawn for the first time, first time lawn owner, uh, home home owners uh, doing their lawn for the first time. Um, you may be asking yourself, Mr. Ferguson, when's the best time for me to uh, to put all this stuff down? I've got my fur, I've got my tenacity, I've got my seed. Uh, I'm ready to go, man. But like, what's the best time to do this thing? Well, I'll tell you what I did because I like to speak from experience, and this is what I did. I bought Alan Hain, the lawn care nut. You can see right there, 2019. Uh, 2019 cool season lawn care hybrid plan. This thing is so old. Um, he's still, I don't think there's any pictures in here, but uh, he's still talking about uh, Carbon X in here. That's how old it is. If you, For those of you that... Um, that remember uh, Carbon X. One of the things that I wanted to mention to you guys about when do I throw this all down? Uh, I don't want to give away all of Alan's stuff in here. I would recommend whether it's LCN, whether it's GCI Turf and Pete, whether it's a local guy or or somebody else on YouTube that you fully trust, uh, look at a lawn care plan. Uh, I would highly advise you to, to get into a plan to have some sense of help and guidance. You've got YouTube, but sometimes it can be, I know, it can be frustrating trying to look up, well, when's the best time to see well, I'm not going to give away everything Alan ha has and give and take money out of his pocket. That would be completely wrong, and I, I don't think that's fair to do at all. Um, but he talks about, and, and Alan breaks down, you know, soil temperatures. That is a big way for all of us in different locations to be able to work off one type of system, which is soil temperatures. You may be up north, and you may be like literally a week out from the window of seeding. And so I'll just mention this one part of what Alan says, because he shared this many times and you can go check out his channel for more information about all of this he's got a, a basic seating uh, video program boot camp and all that but basically just to show you this one thing um, he talks about a seating window based on soil temperatures and what he says is from 70 degrees to 55 degrees is our seating window for cool season lawns so we need to be paying attention to the soil temperatures in our lawn. We're coming out of summer, the, the, the soil temperatures are coming down. When we get into that 70 to 55 degree soil temperature window, this is our window for seeding. We want to seed at this time. And remember, if you're doing something like Kentucky bluegrass, you're talking about two and a half weeks of germination time. You want enough uh, time. And, and some people are like, well, I wanna put down, you know, pre-emergent, I, I may need to overseed and do all these different things. If, it, if you wa have a washout, you need to plan on that. If you have a major rain that washes some of your seed and you got to start over, that's another, I got to put down more uh, GCI blue heat, Kentucky bluegrass. It's going to take you two and a half weeks to germinate that stuff. And so have a plan. I would start closer to the 70 degree mark uh, so that you have room to repair areas that may not come up and we have to have patience as well. But the point of this for the noobs out there is when do I I need to p prepare or plan on putting all this down? Do I just pick a date and do it? Uh, I would say look at your soil temperatures. Yard Mastery has a wonderful app that you can use for free that tells you what the soil temperatures in your area uh, are listed as. And so when you start seeing 70 degrees, I would say it's go time. If you're going to mechanically aerate, go ahead, schedule that, call your local uh, equipment dealer and get that picked up. Do that on when the temperatures are around 70. And on the same day, I would do what I, I recommend doing it the way I did it. Do everything on one day so when you lay your head on the pillow at night, you know all I've got to do is water my seed for the next 14 to 21 days and keep it moist, and I'm going to have a beautiful lawn. I'm going to have a thick, lush, green yard, and it's true, but that's putting down uh, our aerating our lawn, putting down our seed putting down our fertilizer, putting down our tenacity or ethofumacy, whatever you want to do there. And, and also I'm a big fan of peat moss to retain that moisture everywhere I put peat moss with seed, even doing it on the side of my house right now, I'm seeing germination from my old triple threat seed over here because peat moss likes to trap the moisture and also adding maybe hydrotain or foreplay to it. We'll have links below if you want to try that. I was just talking with Mr. Blake from the live stream about that the other day. So soil temperatures. I would recommend, number one, you get on a plan uh, so that you have something to go by because literally he breaks it down in, in ways that even a monkey like myself can do it, um, which is soil temperatures hit this mark. This is what you want to be doing. And then talking about round 
three, when the soil temperatures hit around this mark, this is what you want to start doing. Gives you the rates for putting your fertilizer down. What types of fert? Doesn't have to be yard mastery fert, but these are the types of fertilizer you may want to be trying. These are the biostimulants. If you want to add those in, we've seen from Alan's latest video that they absolutely do work, that, uh, that this is when you want to be putting down certain biostimulants. So it's a plan just to keep you on track. And honest to God with you guys, I don't follow the plan anymore because once you do it over two years, you get to know, okay, okay, I'm getting it in my head here. I know when to do uh, certain things. You get with the program. You don't, you can, you can pass it on to somebody else. So I just wanted to give some hope to the noobs, give some hope to the new people out there that's going to have, I look forward to here, man, this is the first year I ever planted a lawn and it's going so well. I would hate for you to do it too late. I would hate for you to do it way too early. You plant and the sun comes and scorches your seed because the soil temperatures are, you know, 78 in your area. You're in South Carolina. So, so anyways, uh, I want to hear success stories. We want to talk about when is the proper time to put it down. Go by soil temperatures. Uh, for, according to Alan Hain Long Care, not 70 degree soil temperatures to 55. That's our range for seeding. That's our seeding window. Remember how long it takes to germinate the seed you're planting. If you're doing ryegrass, it's pretty quick, three to five days. If you're doing tall, tall fescue, seven to 10 days. If you're doing Kentucky bluegrass, Texas bluegrass, 14 to 21 days. That's a long time. And so if you're looking at putting down other products, we may want to begin in the beginning of the window of the 70 degrees to get it established, get several mows in it before winter comes. Some of you up north, that's more of a threat than here in North Carolina. God bless you. Hope you enjoyed this Friday video. Hope it's been informative and help, helpful. To some of you out there, we'll see you Monday with another lawn care video. God bless you. Peace out, homies.